first, we found ourselves stranded on a spectral ship in the endless void of time. Second, we found ourselves captured inside of a malevolent castle of rituals and dark magic. And finally, in this, the final installment of the Echo Knight series, well, there's only one other place for a sequel to go, and that's into the vastness of outer space. I thought I heard someone calling my name. My fiance, Claudia, and I were on a space trip. Suddenly, there was an intense shock and roaring sound. A massive shock as the shuttle crashed onto the moon. That's all I remember. I'm slowly starting to come to, but I can't sense that Claudia's here anywhere. So, as we start disoriented amongst the rubble of a crashed shuttle, we aren't really given too much in the way of backstory, just that we have found ourselves on the surface of the moon with our missing fiancé and what I'm assuming to be many a missing crew member of the shuttle. The only real directions we have right now are to head to some mysterious facility and... I guess to rejoin up with our missing fiancé. And considering the look and state of this shuttle here, I think it would probably be uh, best that we get out of here as quickly as possible. This place doesn't seem structurally sound. But, as luck would have it, there's a bulkhead door right here. We can just go ahead and head out this way. Or, that would possibly be a bit too easy. I guess as luck would have it, we do have a mechanical stewardess right here. She might be able to direct us towards an exit. Thank you for choosing Lola Line for your flight today. Sadly, it seems that the stewardess is in the same shape as the rest of the ship, and she won't really be much help to us in trying to escape. I guess it will just be left up to us to try to navigate the uh, very narrow corridors of the shuttle here. And I feel like there won't be too many avenues of exploration for us on the shuttle. Seems the only real way for us to go are towards those doors in the back. But yeah, I guess the question right now is exactly what this facility is. We haven't really been given any impression of what could be on the moon. It's pretty much a barren and dead rock orbiting the Earth. Um. 
And also, there is the question of if there were any other passengers on the shuttle. They're coming. They're coming. They are, they are everywhere. everywhere. Though we do get an answer to that question pretty promptly. They're coming. They are everywhere. And while this passenger isn't immediately evident, we do stumble across him pretty shortly. You're still here. Leave, Leave now. now. You should be hanging around, around here. here. Otherwise, Otherwise they'll find you. you. Yeah, everybody will die. die. You'll, You'll die, die too. too. Hey, bring me my flask. I'm no good without it. Bring it to me. Give it to me now. So, before we can continue forward, we are going to have to give this ghost his final drink of alcohol. And for those who are not familiar with the Echo Knight series, that is pretty much the crux of the series. It's just trying to assist ghosts so they can be released from their mortal coil and, you know, go into the afterlife. Usually so you can progress forward in the story. In this case, yeah, we don't really have any other way through the shuttle. So to get through this roadblock, we are going to have to give this ghost a final send-off beverage. And while in the galley here, there are some coffee machines. They do appear to be empty as of right now. And I feel like this ghost is looking for something a little bit stronger. But since we are pretty limited in places we can go, it could be that we overlook something here in the forward cabin. Could be that while we wrecked, something managed to get dislodged from the seats, and it could be something hidden away up here. And indeed, in the very first chair, we find a flask with a little bit of spirit still lingering inside. And what better way to send off a spirit? Then with a little taste of spirits. Also, this gives us an opportunity to look at our inventory, where we can see the ring we picked up, picture of our fiancé, a healing med kit, and our flask. Now, the med kit is important, because in the lower left-hand corner, you'll see what equates to our health bar. And you might have noticed, whenever we were getting close to the ghost, our heartbeat started to go up and up and up. And, if you don't take care of that, well, we will flatline and have a heart attack. For now, though, let's go ahead and hand off the flask so we can continue forward. This is it. If I drink this, everybody will disappear. You are you sure you want to go there? Watch out for the fog. And with his spirit released, we can now continue forward. Though before we do that, I think it is worthwhile to go over the fact that we are going to be collecting quite a bit of information as we progress through the game. Such as pretty much every character that we happen to run into or know about, such as Claudia, our uh, aforementioned uh, fiancé. And, you know, even just kind of odd throwaway characters like that horribly in disrepaired android.
But more importantly, we do get a little bit of backstory and reminder about all the ghosts that we are going to interact with, especially some of their more helpful words, such as a warning about a mysterious fog. Also, we are given helpful descriptions about the different locations we have been in, in case they have helpful story reminders. And you might notice there is a final section there for recordings, and we are going to learn about that later. For right now, Let's see if we can't make our way out of this shuttle. Because outside of Dudley, I do not think we are going to run across too much more in the shuttle. Just a very large amount of furniture and infrastructure in disrepair. What's worse than that? It does seem like there are going to be sections of the shuttle that we are not even going to be able to get into, even though they are not completely destroyed. But it does kind of work out to our benefit. It does kind of bottleneck us into the one set location we really need to go to get out of the ship. Yeah, this entry into Echo Knight does kind of break away from some of the other norms that were set up by the previous games. I mean, in the previous games, you really didn't have a very obvious health meter. And the more non-hostile ghosts really weren't any kind of a threat to you, though... In the end, I think that's just more of an indicator that they're nearby since, well, in this game, as you probably just saw, they aren't readily available till you get pretty close to them, as opposed to the previous games. It does seem that we have made our way into another dead end of sorts. Now I do think we've stumbled across why we might not be getting the full array of power in the shuttle. It seems in the battery pantry here, there does seem to be a single battery missing. And I do feel we're going to want to keep that in mind for later, though for right now, we don't really have much else to do in here. But for the most part, there has been a lot of streamlining, streamlining done for this final installment of the Echo Knight series, and I do think it is a pretty worthwhile finale. And hey, we have finally come across a hatch that might lead us out of the shuttle here. There is a very conveniently, conveniently placed opening mechanism for it. And if we take one final look at the shuttle, yeah, I, I do believe we did not manage to land in the proper landing zone, so... I think wherever we are in the facility, we are a little bit off course. But 
even without really knowing where we should be in the facility, it's really hard to get over the fact that, I don't know, the facility just seems as quiet as a crypt. I haven't shown it off just yet, but there is a run button, and there are times when you are going to need to use it. Because while there are non-hostile ghosts, there are pretty hostile ghosts that we will also have to deal with, and they will make our heartbeat rise very, very quickly. In fact, I think once our heartbeat reaches 300 beats per minute, that's it for us. But, I guess it's a good thing that we really didn't need anything else on the shuttle, because I don't really feel like we are going to be able to make our way past whatever violence that ghost wants to incur upon us. Again, before we can continue on, we have to deal with Nikolai here. While he does seem earnest in his warnings, we can't turn back. And the only real way to continue forward is to convince him of who we are looking for. While he has cleared the way, we don't want to leave, leave our confused cosmonaut just yet. Because right next to him on the ground is an item we want to make sure and pick up. Which 
appears to be a broken radio. This was something I was using for communication. It broke before I had a chance to communicate with my research team. I do not think any of them are still alive. Yeah, it appears there is a bit more to Nikolai's story. confused and sad girl led to Nikolai's death, though while it might seem a bit confusing as to how that could happen after our run-in with that specter on the bridge there, I guess I could understand. Also, you probably have noticed that as we have progressed through the game, there is a light that has different, you know, strength settings, and it is extremely useful, but it also does have a very limited lifespan. So, well, unless you are going to manage to pick up batteries all the time, it is very clear that you probably don't need to be running with the light on all the time. Also, what else is very clear is that you know, this facility must have been in a state of disrepair for quite some time before we got here. I mean, I, I don't assume that the shuttle crash caused all of this. But we reach a bit of a fork in the road here. Though one of our possible means of progression is currently blocked by a security card door. And another available door, while useful, is not really a means of progression. No, instead of progression, what the monitor room here provides us is a little bit of means of recon and intelligence. As opposed to the previous Equinite games, you're really not going to have to fly blind as you go from area to area. Instead, with these monitor rooms, you can find nice little layouts and even cameras to help you look into nearby areas. This can be especially helpful if you are unsure if there might be ghosts in the upcoming area. Also, it allows you to get a little bit more story. Wait for me. Yeah, outside of that poor ghost, apparently not wanting to be left behind, in the other camera for the area, we can see a body just outside the range of the, you know, field of view for the camera. Which could be the body of that ghost, but I'm sure we'll find out later. But outside of that, in some of the cameras... Well, this is a little bit harder to spot. There is even more story that you can find if you have a particularly watchful eye. You can kind of see there, there's a strange bit of a glow on the ground. And if we zoom in super close, Come near me! Don't! <laughs> Come near me! You... Ma! 
monster! Don't come near me! get a quick little snippet of some background event. Though, as it's still fairly early in the storyline, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But the one other very important feature of the monitor room is the comlink control panel, as it is our sole means of saving, so it's always good to keep an eye out for these monitor rooms whenever you head into a new location. But yeah, those little snippets of, you know, flashback footage are what's going to be in the recording section of the notes area. And it, it does allow us to piece together just some, I guess, background about the general area. And while to some degree you might assume that Maybe the furniture has been thrown around by the shuttle crash, or just the just general disheveled state of the station. It instead seems that some of this could have been done by something that took over the crew members. But it's still a little bit too early for a conjecture at this point. Right now, we are just kind of stumbling around in the dark, trying our best to get our bearings straight. In the center here, we see a very lovely monument to the moon. And along with that, we find a handy little map. Show some nearby areas, including the fact that we just came from the work area. But there is one slight problem with doing too much exploration. And that's that the darkness that we are currently in is not just for show, and in fact... Yeah, the power outage is currently locking out some of the nearby areas. Which, I, I guess, kind of works out to our benefit, that the one sole area that is still open for exploration right now, I think, should be the perfect area for us to head to, to get some of the power going in the station. It's been a while. What's the matter with you? You look strange. Do I look funny? I've been alone since you left. Why don't you come to my room later? It's next to the center hall. We have a lot to catch up on. Well, that certainly stood out amongst all the other odd events we've been having to deal with. And in fact, if we look at our notes, yeah, if we aren't sure of uh, the people we've run into, they will come up as question marks. And in this case, this particular gentleman we've identified as not a ghost, though it's a bit strange that he wasn't in a suit like our own. Kind of makes you think that Maybe there's still some life support on the station here, but it's honestly not something I want to currently risk. And we 
We've already been warned about some mysterious fog. And considering the the lack of life on the station, I, I, I don't really want to risk getting out of our space spacesuits just yet. But yeah, that alarm there was not just a uh, quick little jump scare. It was actually to draw our attention to this blinking calendar here on the wall. If you stay there long enough, you will happen to see all the numbers flash up on it and get an idea of the exact date. And it's good to keep that in mind for the future. Also, while we could have headed up the escalator, I feel like it would be worthwhile to go ahead and finish exploring this floor before we head up or further down. It's especially worth doing that, because down in this area, we do find the battery room, which does sound like something we could use for the shuttle. But it also sounds like there's another ghost nearby. Thankfully, he is non-hostile. Where did you go? Carol? If I can get the electricity, I can open that door. Carol, mon petit. So this ghost needs some power back on, and we can see some solar panels outside along with some Kyle. nearby generators. If only we could get those solar panels moving, and wouldn't you know it, there is a nearby control room. Well, Yeah, since it's still a bit early in the game, they don't start throwing hard puzzles at us just yet. System reset. Please enter the date. Though, I guess if you did manage to overlook the date that was flashing on that very obvious loud blinking calendar, you might be a little bit confused about how to solve this puzzle. Entry confirmed. Deploying solar panels. And just like that, we now have at least some auxiliary power running throughout the facility. And I I guess once that became obvious, that led the ghost to explore for the missing Carol, and also leave behind this mysterious video disc that only says, Trip with Dad. Yeah, sometimes it will take quite a few steps to solve some ghost problems. They will not truly be solved until the ghost completely disappears. Also, be ready for quite a number of very squeaky chairs in the future, but the main reason to come over to this desk is for this monthly report. Yeah, there is going to be a bit of reading material throughout the game. And while normally I would be showing each individual screen, I just happen to overlook doing it this time around. I will do it in the future, but to summarize, this report just goes over the fact that the the facility is in a state of disrepair, and I guess what they're doing on the moon here is doing a little bit of mining. 
and that in the course of mining, it happened to unleash this very strange, but seemingly innocuous fog over the entire station. I guess that kind of explains where the fog came from, considering there's not really much in the way of atmosphere on the moon. But yeah, even though the power is on the main hub and we want to head back there, it's still good to find any places uh, where we can't fully explore just yet, such as in the battery room here. We are going to need another level 2 key car to fully explore. And we do have a monitor room where we can take a look in that locked room, but I more or less use it to just make a quick little save before I continue onwards. It's always good to keep in mind that there is no auto-saving in this game, much like in any of the other Echo Knight games. It's still very much at its core a adventure game of sorts. But yeah, with the power now back on, see some of the more convenient features of the station still in working order. Got nice moving floors back there. Along with some freshly powered up escalators. And well, since we're here and they're on, go ahead and head on upwards and see what's waiting for us up there. But yeah, even with this bit of power on, it does seem like some areas of the facility are a lot darker than others. This one seems to have a very archaic and ornate lock on its door. And if we happen to look at the map, we'll see that this is called the Observatory, and I assume... Well, that means that's a very large telescope there. I'm sure we'll be making use of that later on. Though, uh, that pretty much finishes up exploring what we can explore, so onwards back to that central hub area. lights back on, we can see just why there is a frame rate drop in this area. It's especially huge, but more important than that, we can now see, uncovered by the light, that there is a doorway over here. And I think I have an idea who might be behind it. Hey, it's our very mysterious, suitless friend. Ah, you're here. Please, make yourself at home. A shuttle crashed some time ago. A lot of people were aboard. But now... Everybody's dead. And that black shadow... I can manage myself being alone. I'm an android. But I'm glad that you're back. Since you left, I've been painting pictures here. Pretty pictures, all alone. I don't know why I paint pictures. Before I knew it, I was painting pictures. 
You have something that you're looking for, right? Maybe I can help you out. Come back here from time to time. I'll be here, waiting. So we have a creative android in isolation who's willing to offer us some hints. Let's see what he knows about Claudia. I know that woman very well. Her name is Claudia Selfer. She's an intelligent woman, well-known in mechanical engineering. You have something that you're looking for, right? Maybe I can help you out. Come back here from time to time. I'll be here, waiting. He's sadly not able to give us too much additional information, just that Claudia has some background in mechanical engineering, and that we have some association with this android who... oddly seems to like painting pictures of the dead. Or at least of death that we have managed to free. I mean, I, I guess it's nice that they are in greener pastures, but it's still a little bit off-putting. Also... You see that thing on the desk? You can take it with you. Hope you'll find it useful. In addition to an occasional hint and some creepy backgrounds. We can also sometimes find healing syringes in this room, and that med kit that we are carrying around allows us to carry up to three healing syringes, which I think will completely bring our heartbeat back down to its base level, which can probably be helpful in the future. For now, you might have noticed we heard a familiar voice as we were almost heading into that room. And that's because right below that door is a familiar spectral face. So he's missing his daughter, and Nikolai did mention running into a crying young confused girl who happened to kill him. Yeah, I get a feeling that those things are definitely connected. As our heartbeat rapidly rises, we confront very quickly just the reality of that very, very terrifying young girl. Yeah, believe it or not, we came extremely close to dying there. But we have managed to stumble into another monitor room in the residential area. And... Well, I think we've made quite a bit of progress into this mystery, so hopefully you will join me next time as we progress forward and hopefully reunite young Carol with her father.